All right, thank you, Michael. Um, I have, uh, in the next 10 minutes, trying to uh, give you some um, uh, uh, story or, or examples of how we use nanopore sequencing to uh, deconvolute a uh, complex cancer genome. Um, um, the, really, the clinical cancer genomics um, the really center on the two areas or very distinct resolution. One is on a very gross, um, uh, high level of so-called digital karyotyping uh, uh, aneuploidy. Uh, the other is mostly centered around um, gene-specific and structural variations. Um, um, uh, gene-specific structural variation changes that inform cancer type or cancer therapy. Um, however, the growing evidence have shown that uh, if you um, actually more integrated uh, collective structural variations can be better informed because it perturbed um, specific gene pathways or networks collective dysregulation. And with that, you can really use that tool to study tumor selection, tumor evolution, and, and with that information, inform further metastasis states and trans treatment strategy. Therefore, we, we believe uh, a very extensive, comprehensive structure variation in cancer genome will actually, uh, in the future, uh, move into a clinical gen uh, cancer genomics applications. However, um, the existing tools or existing um, so-called state-of-art study structure variation, and when we started this work about uh, last year, are I mostly used the so-called short reads. And then with the short read-based structure variation, many use the so sort of discordant pair reads or reads actually split junctions. Um, that actually, with that fundamental discovery mechanism, you require um, very high depth and then and has certain limitation in specific structural variation types. For example, short uh, structural variation or structural variation reside in repeat regions or uh, 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 structural variation involved in short distance. And we don't think that's actually a very good um, uh, comprehensive tools. So with that, we actually um, wanted to explore using long read nanopore structure variation sequencing. Um, I don't think I need to go into more detail, but just suffice to say that we started with this project hoping to generate universal around 12 to 15 KB reads. And, and then by, by the sample prep we have done, uh, uh, we have uh, successfully produced uh, a structure, uh, uh, sorry, uh, free, fragment length and center around 12 KB. Um, um, this just to compare, if we take the same sample prep and run on the pack bile, we do see a bimodal distribution. So we think actually in terms of size precision, an ampoule can give us a better um, so-called uniform size uh, distribution. And then, um, so again, with long reads, we're hoping to use this to do structural variation code a very uh, efficient way. So therefore, we're trying to understand whether we can reduce the depth. In this case, I think we have attempt to do uh, to do cost structure variation from a bit over 2x genome coverage, 5.3 gigabases from 13 runs of data, mostly R9 chemistry, and we use a higher accuracy reads for, for structural variation call. And then the example of showing the length distribution, this is the longest we have in that point of time, although we can actually do better these days. Um, this is a 50 KB reads. As you can see, the average identity is around 95% with most of the error comes from insertion deletions. Um, so like I said, uh, the current uh, tool are mostly centered around short reads. So uh, at the time of uh, last year when we started to work on this, there are very few so-called long read based uh, or, or long read specific structural variation calling. So we actually trying to attempt to develop our own tool and, and with that in mind to overcome current limitation of short read based specifically uh, structural variation with repeats, structural variation tendon, and structural variation within short distance. And uh, I can stay uh, around to discuss further detail on the our picky pipeline, but basically concept is we use a, a liner that actually optimize for higher arrow to accuracy so we can ensure better sensitivity in line all the reads. Secondly, 
we have a, a engineer our structure variation color so we can call things like overlapping alignment to better infer structure variation in tendon repeats. Um, thirdly, I think we have um, trying to uh, minimize um, or a better call in the structure variation in short distance. Um, I will show you example there next. So um, this is an example how our data uh, our pipeline performed. And then this is an example ta uh, taking a 12 KB or 13 KB reads here. We can actually uh, using this to call a 900 base pair tendon repeats regions where the standard short read tool are, uh, is un unable to um, uh, or create a, some sort of a high, low, low accuracy uh, uh, alignment. And then secondly is that we structure have a feature to call, I wouldn't say it's a haplotype specific structure, it's really structural variation co-occurred on the same long reads. So here example of showing um, co-occurred translocation in from a 30 KB reads that translocate between to, uh, chromosome 7 to chromosome 20 and followed by 20 to chromosome 2. So it's like a, a, a crossover events there. So the, the, this is um, the feature uh, of, our, of structural variation color. So with that 0.5 gigabase of data, uh, in total around 750,000 reads, we were able to align then at the 94% um, alignment rate. From there, calling about 34,000 um, structural variations that range from inversion, translocation, tendon duplication, insertion, deletions. And then we took a, a, a collective of different kinds of total 200 uh, of structural variations in those collections. We validated 100% of those structural variations actually with two reads or more coverage. While the, the structural variation with one read um, uh, coverage have validated a range between 50% to 100%. Depends on the type of structural variations. So we have obtained a higher uh, accuracy. Um, how about the sensitivity here? So we took um, the previous study, like using short read data, and we were able to call all the short read data called structural variations uh, if there's Oxford nanopore coverage. More than that, if we take 100x coverage of the short read data and then compare the, those so-called the gold standard of those 123 uh, structural variations we, valid, we successfully validated, we are able to actually uh, uh, showing that our structural variation call with 2.5x coverage long reads can do better than uh, the short read 100x coverage specific in the category of short tendon repeats, inversions, and insertions. So uh, uh, this is really something that we actually started engineer upon. Um, and these are the example of type of structural variations our peaky pipeline specific call. For example, uh, a read actually span uh, short tendon repeats. In this case, 14 KB uh, uh, carried the 6 KB tendon repeats. We call it in this category so called so tendon repeat complete. One read captured entire tendon repeat regions. Uh, this is our pipeline case specific call. Second is insertions. Insertions that in our category is insertion. Our inserted sequence have no sequence similarity with existing um, database uh, human ge reference genome. So we, we, we have actually, this is example of uh, uh, insertion and carry a, a ritual transposed uh, CDNA in, in the chromosome um, 15. Um, so with that collection, we can actually start to explore biology of those data sets. And uh, one thing strikes us is if we actually plot the span distributions of those uh, uh, structural variation, we see a very distinct uh, 300 base pair uh, insertion deletion as well as tendon, dupl uh, tendon duplications. So that intrigues us to look at the repeats content. And indeed, what we find is um, those actually tendon duplication deletion insertion are largely a proportional distributed to repeat content, and the repeat contents are actually very significantly over the entire structural variations. So mainly like a majority of the structural variation in mammalian genomes are copy number changes of the repeat elements. And that, but the repeat elements distribution is quite, is quite different. Intended duplication is mostly simple repeats, wherever deletion insertion are more like sign repeats here. 
And then this next series, we actually look at the um, so-called insertions. They are actually uh, involved uh, nothing to do with any similarity with human genome sequences. In fact, uh, we see a greater representation of those micro-insertions in all kinds of structural variations. And then that allows to uh, postulate a potential mechanism of non-homologous um, uh, end-joint during DNA fragmentations that introduce of so non-template synthesis. That's interesting to see. Um, then secondly is at the junction of those um, uh, Translocate uh, uh, structural variation. We see actual microhomology. This is a complex slide, but just to show you that there are similarity of multiple small minor differences. Uh, uh, sorry, small um, nucleotide span actually homo homologous between the junction reads, suggesting potential also non homologous uh, enjoining events mechanism. And uh, from the 66,000 breakpoint junctions, we see actually mostly then enriched in the uh, heavily trans tra transcription regions. Genes are heavy dense, uh, have higher tendency to have a, a, a genomic uh, fragility or double strand break. And then also when we look at the, actually their chromatin conformations, the, uh, the structure variation breakpoints heavily uh, proportionally increase when the chromosome have a so-called interchromosome connectivity propensity, meaning when the chromosome are heavily sort of connecting, they tend to be made more likely to break. Um, these actually structural variation, in terms of real biology, heavily actually enrich in the regulatory elements. If we take the genes affected by the regulatory elements, we can use that to very um, clearly segregate uh, the type of, tr uh, trans uh, type of tumors, in this case, ten, uh, triple negative breast can cancer versus, so we can use that to categorize tumor type. Um, the summary is actually we can use this to characterize structural variation of nanopore sequencing with high specificity and sensitivity. We have to generate a customized pipeline that actually de derive a full range or diverse range of architectures from very modest sequencing coverage. We find the repetitive DNA is most sources, major source of human variation, genome variations which are actually was not explored by Shuri data. We generate the base resolution breakpoints, allow us to look at the microinsertions, microhomology, and the genome with some sort of fragility and stability with transcription regulations. Um, um, there's more detailed slides, and, and uh, Leon will actually present tomorrow at uh, post number nine, which I, uh, we both will be there to answer any specific questions you have. And this work is actually really sort of uh, uh, joined the force by uh, the cancer biologist in the Jackson Laboratory and the Genome Technology Group in, in, in Jackson. And we are actually gratefully uh, for all the support from Nanopore. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so I think we have a, a couple of questions. Hi, <laughs> what, would we, what would the advantages of, over here, Oh, hi. <laughs> what would the, would the, the advantages of PICI be over uh, BWA sniffles or uh, uh, last NSV? Well, um, let me just say, I'm, I'm, you, if you ask any developers, any source structure variation caller, they always say theirs is the best. Um, however, those pipeline comparisons really require same data sets, uh, optimized opt parameter to do that comparison, which we're doing right now. Um, but I think in general, in, in the very shallow base look at the data or the comparison data, I, I think there's, I really don't think there's one tool that can do all. There are to, the tools can do better, some tool can do better in certain type of SV. Uh, or certain type of data sets than the others. In our case, like I very clearly stated, we're very interested in tendon repeats because of medical reasons and, and the short indels because the breakpoints resolutions. So that the pipeline actually developed mostly to tailor that. Um, from my understanding, Nano SV requires very um, elegant training sets to do very good call. If you do that, you can get a very good call. If not, that's probably the also called biased. And sniffles also have certain advantage and also certain limitation. In our case, we find a short indels. Are be we perform better in the short indels compared to sniffles, where sniffles can be outperforming certain areas. I, I can discuss in more details, yeah. Great. 